This is where a baby would grow, right? Oh no. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid and today I'm going to be playing a game called Parasite in Love. Well, that's a new one. A game where a microscopic parasite is in love with you, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> this game was suggested to me, so, uh, let's see what's gonna happen. News reporter. A rare infection from a brain-eating amoeba is being blamed for the death of a North Carolina man. He was swimming in a water park earlier this month. Oh, that's, oh, that's the spooky part. That's the scary part right there. The amoeba is usually found in shallow fresh water. It can cause severe headaches, fever, nausea, and vomiting, which can progress into having a stiff neck, seizures, and a coma. Lovely. It's only infectious when water is forced up the nose during activities such as diving and water skiing. Ooh. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, the amoeba is rare but overwhelmingly deadly. In the last 57 years, there have only been 145 known infections, but of those, only four survived. Oh, that's that's lovely. That's like a what? What's this? is that like a one in 400 chance of survival? I don't know math. The CDC says the illness is particularly difficult to treat because it's so notoriously hard to detect and progresses so quickly. The next time you go swimming, wear a nose plug and avoid activities that involve being fully submerged in freshwater areas. This is Gabe Stewart, NBS News. <laughs> oh, that sounds scary. Oh boy. That's the scariest that's the scariest thing that humanity needs to be afraid of. Is this actually moving forward? Creepy. Oh. You feel a rush of happiness as you continue your hike, because you hear nothing but nature around you. The birds are chirping, the wind is rustling through the tree branches, and water is trickling nearby. It's so peaceful compared to your busy office, that is currently far, far away from you. The hundreds of emails you get as a project manager can wait until you return from your vacation. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. So far from my office that I didn't hear that news report about avoiding fresh water. Fresh water, fresh water, water. You finally arrive at the lake. The photos you look through online couldn't convey the beauty of this place. You're so glad to stop here before entering the cabin you rented for your little vacation. The hours you spent hiking made your dip in the water all the more refreshing. Waves of relief wash over you as you swim around, and after a while you let yourself float to enjoy the moment. That sounds lovely, but wasn't there just a news report about and a brain eating amoeba? You close your eyes and your breathing slows. The sun heats up your face while the water cools your back. You hear a scream, and a wave pushes you to the side. Uh-oh. You stabilize yourself, coughing and sputtering for air, trying to clear water from your mouth and nose. That's exactly what I didn't want to happen. A boy laughs as he bobs up right next to you. He smiles brightly without a care in the world. Be careful, you could have hurt us both. But nothing happened. His mother calls for him, and he swims away as he steps out of the water. His mother already has a towel in hand and dries his hair. You're a little envious. Clumsy with your words outside of work, you have a hard time connecting more with the people you love. Your friends and family do like to spend time with you, but you sometimes feel lacking when you try to show them the same affection. Maybe you would have an easier time if you had a family of your own. Your friend did tell you that her instincts as a new mother help immensely when taking care of her baby. You hoped that in your case, the instinct would take over in talking to your child. How great would it be to have such a deep connection? You sigh and rise from the lake. Ooh, pretty. Ooh, cozy. You arrive in the cabin you have booked for the next two weeks. The space is too big for just one person, but it also feels luxurious to have so much space for yourself. You're basically checking this place out as a vacation home for the future family that you always dreamed of. Aww. Even if you don't have a partner, the thought of taking a trip together fills you with joy. By the fireplace, you look at the couches where you could snuggle with your future family. You smile, imagining your child imitating a bear as they wear the fur that drapes over one of the cushions. You stretch your arms as you yawn. Time to unpack and get settled. Ooh. Ooh, this art is gorgeous. You put your hand into your bag and take out your vacuum sealed clothes. You pack them this way to make space for other things. Your wallet, smartphone, food, toiletries, and some books to pass the time. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. 
After putting all your stuff away, you go and take a shower. Half an hour later, you leave the bathroom refreshed and donning a white robe provided by the rental, walking to the couches with a grin and a glass of white wine. Now this feels like a true vacation. Spookle. Oh yeah, I forgot this is part of a Halloween jam. Lovely. You take your phone out and check it out of habit from your job. I want to see the photos. Your mother sent you digital copies of old family photos. When you were little, your family used to visit the big greenhouse in the city center quite often. I saw how low their battery was and instinctively got the urge to plug it in. There are also some photos of you with your co-workers. When did you take these selfies with them? You must have gotten drunk at the last office party. Any milestone has to be celebrated, is the motto of your boss. So parties happen pretty often. You don't know how your boss is able to make the company pay for so many, but you don't dare to ask him. You scroll further back and finally find some photos with your friends. The last time you guys met was to say goodbye to a friend in the group who was leaving the country. You should call them sometime soon. You have messages from your dad, mum, co-workers, and friends. Oh, holy cow. Well, it's, 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 it's just like, well, let's just read them all. Your dad always sends short messages like cloud with a photo of the sky attached. You must have inherited his blunt way of words. That's adorable. Friend. You sigh. It's gotten so much harder to meet up since your friend group became adults. You yawn and decide to go to bed. Ah, what could possibly go wrong? Uh-oh. The sun warms your cheek and birds chirp as you wake up. What a peaceful morning. It's been a while since you've slept this well. You check your phone and notice that you've gotten a message from your dad. Pretty flower. Attached is a photo of a flower he saw on his way to work. It brightens your day whenever he does this. Aww. You want to send him a photo back, so you decide that today you'll explore your surroundings, take pictures, and make some bookmarks with the flowers you find. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Once you're outside, you take a deep breath. You can smell damp moss, flowers, and wet grass. It must have rained a little during the night. You take your smartphone out and start your hike. Your shoes sink in every time you take a step on the pine needle-covered ground. As you look around, the wind caresses the leaves above you, making their shadows dance on the ground. Soon, you spot some small purple flowers growing nestled between fallen tree trunks. You squat down and take a picture up close. Ooh. You stare proudly at your photo. A dewdrop on one of the petals reflects the sunlight, making the scene feel more magical. You stand up and send it to your dad. Or at least, you try to. You see your bad reception and give it another attempt, but it doesn't go through. You decide to send it once you have better connection at the cabin. Then you look at the flowers again. Upon further thought, they would be a pretty decoration for a bookmark when dried. You carefully pick one and make your way back. After you put your bag away, you fold a sheet of paper around the flower and tuck it inside a book. You press the book shut and then stack several more books on top of it. That should make it flat and dry it after a while. Oh, is that how you do that? I've always wanted to do that. I never learned how to do that. I should do that. Then you remember to send the photo. Your dad just answers with, nice. Then seconds later, he sends a photo back. Oh, new wooden toy. You chuckle. You used to make them together when you were younger. I miss you, Dad. You shake your head, a little embarrassed after those words escape your mouth. Somehow you can't bring yourself to send those words. You just write nice back. Riveting conversation. After a long bubble bath, you are ready to prepare your dinner. You cut the meat on a chopping board, almost in a rhythmic fashion. After a while of only eating takeout, it feels good to cook for yourself again. <laughs> but... <laughs> Sir and or madam? Are you, Are you cooking? cooking? It looks good. good. You let go of your knife too fast and it clatters onto the counter. You whip your head around. No one was there. But you had clearly heard a voice. <laughs> Slowly, you move around the cabin, peeking into each corridor, but you found no sign of anyone else in the house. Still anxious, you go back to the kitchen. You start the stove and sear the meat in the pan. The fat glistens and the smell makes your mouth water. You almost forgot the previous strange incident. 
Oh, I didn't. Hungry and impatient, you grab a fork and tear into the meat. It's still a little rare and bloody. You enjoy the flavor and relax, feeling the stress from earlier leave your body. Putting the odd incident behind you, you are still able to find some enjoyment today. Mm -hmm. Cool. The morning alarm almost gives you a heart attack. With half-shut eyes, you search for your phone and hastily turn off the alarm. You sit up and massage your temples. It's been a while since you had a headache this bad. Uh-oh. Sluggishly, you crawl out of bed and make your way to the kitchen. You brew some tea in hopes that it will help and take it with you to the living room. Are you feeling off because of all that hiking you did? Or was it the rare meat? Several hours later... Uh-oh. You breathe heavily as you lean against the cold, white ceramic of the toilet. The last time you had to vomit was after the last office party, after securing a multi-million dollar deal for the company. The constant flow of alcohol was the only thing making the loud music bearable. The constant flow of alcohol was the only thing making the loud music bearable, but the next morning you had the hangover from heck. You can't remember much else. Check the kitchen for bad food. Hmm. You know you bought the food just before your hike, but you can't help but suspect that something you ate might have gone bad. No, not the bread or anything else in the kitchen. It's all fresh. Was it really food poisoning? Could it be some suppressed stress from work finally resurfacing? Or was it too much sun after being holed up in the office for so long? Could be any of those. You grab your phone and sit down on a couch. You decide to research some more with your phone and open your browser in order to look up your symptoms. Oh. Oh, I actually... Oh. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's neat. That's cool. The results suggest vomiting might have been caused by an infection, food poisoning, motion sickness, brain injury, or migraines. If it lasts for more than two days, you should call a doctor. Oh, that's neat. That's super cool. Hallucinations? You're not sure why you... Why you type that? <laughs> Maybe you should call a doctor now. Just when you're about to type in a number, your hand seizes up. <gasps> your phone falls onto the couch. What was that? You hesitate. You dropped your phone from a little muscle cramp. You've had those before. Whatever bug you've caught will probably pass by tomorrow morning. You get yourself some tea, a slice of toast, and rest for today. Mm -hmm. You slept through the entire day, but you still feel weak when you wake up. You drink some tea and wonder if you should eat something, but you decide it would probably be better to wait it out until tomorrow and give your stomach some time to rest. It would be a waste of food if you had to throw up again. You drag yourself to the fireplace and make a fire. Ooh. You make yourself comfortable on the couch and watch the flames. They sway from left to right, and if you aren't careful, you could get lost in their hypnotic dance. You start to feel lonely. Even as you enjoy looking at the flames, you miss your mother's chicken soup that she cooked whenever you got sick. You snuggle even deeper into the blankets. Why did you have to get sick all alone, out in the woods? Oh dear. Oh, oh, oh the background's getting spooky. The background's getting kooky spooky. Your mind drifts off and you look around the room in a daze. Is the room getting bigger? Oh no! Maybe you just imagined it. <laughs> it's all right. I'm here. You force yourself upright and seize the fireplace poker, brandishing it in front of you while you search for the source of the voice. You could have sworn it was right next to you. But there's no one else in the room. After what happened the other day, you've checked as much. Of course, you're the only one here. Right? You back into a corner, so at least you aren't ambushed from behind. Good idea, but I don't think that's gonna help you in this situation. The call is coming from inside the house! Then you take out your phone and try to call for help. No. <laughs> no? An intense pain wells up in your head. You jolt in pain and let go of your phone. It hits the ground, bounces once, then falls flat. You tremble as you kneel down to retrieve it, you sigh when you see that your phone is still intact. Okay, whatever just made its presence known seems like it doesn't want you to call for help. Alright, duly noted. You don't care. 
Your thumb hovers over the dial pad. You're going to make that call. Call the police. Okay. That That won't help. You nearly throw your phone out of fear, but you stop yourself in time. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. (laughs) You only feel a little pain. Tears roll down your cheeks. You hate this voice. It's swimming in your head. It's seizing up your hand. It's like it's controlling you. No, no, now you sound delusional. What voice? You mean thinking, right? That's what everyone does. You're just fighting your own intuition, aren't you? You close your phone and just go to bed. You hope this ends soon. Eh, oh dear. Oh goodness. Oh goodness gracious. I'm wondering if that brain picture changes each time. I need to check that. When you open your eyes, you're not sure what you're looking at. Colors? Patterns? Why can't you focus? (laughs) Good morning! Oh dear. Oh hello, sir! Panic floods your body. There, at the foot of your bed, grins a ghoulishly colored man. He's kind of cute, though. Who is he? How did he break in? You snatch a nearby pillow and throw it at the intruder, but it sails right through him. You stare in sheer disbelief. Like, oh man, I got the only haunted cabin in the forest. Oh, he's like, I'm not a ghost. Are you a ghost? A g g g g ghost? <laughs> no, no, I'm a living being. We met at the lake. Oh, we met in the lake. Oh, that's so cute and terrifying. I was looking for a place to multiply, and you were just so warm and so nourishing. I couldn't resist. And finally, you can see me. He leans forward. (laughs) Hi. I'm an amoeba. I think you humans call me... Negleria Fowlemida? Negleria Fowleri? Negleria Fowleri. I'm gonna call you Larry. Your name is Larry now. So I'm starting to see things. I need help. Wait. Are you getting a doctor? How do you know what a doctor is, Larry? Of course. So you're trying to get rid of me. You feel intense pain as a new wave sends you into agony. Rude. How could you? We need to stay together. Don't you understand? Okay, wait, wait, please, calm down. I won't do it. Good. The pain disappears. You feel even weaker than before. Exhausted, you lay back down on the bed. He's an amoeba. He's in your head. And he's sprouted more and more of him to root around in your brain. And the pain is killing you. Killing you? So, wait, aren't I just going to die then? He doesn't answer immediately. Don't say it like that, Marlo. Isn't it wonderful we get to spend time together? You have a hard time wrapping your head around this situation, but what you do know is that you're in bad shape, and this... thing won't let you call for help. Did it have to be me? Wasn't there a better place for you? Nope, never. Well, of course, it's rare for my kind to infect humans. But I see it as a sign. And you know what I saw when I got closer into your brain? Your wish for a family, Marlo. It's as strong as mine. Uh. He comes closer and puts his head on your stomach. Oh, but also terrifying. This is where a baby would grow, right? Oh, no. He breathes in deeply. Is this how a fetus in a womb feels? Why would they ever leave their mother's body? Larry? Larry? It's so warm and comforting inside you humans. A shudder runs through your body. You want to hit him and push him away, even though you know your hands would face through him. To make this new family arrangement easier for you, I'll even let you call me Nial. Aw, oh, but I like Larry. Alright, fine, Nial. Like your unrequainted love from your anniversary days. Hey now, them's private memories, Larry. He can dig into your memories? I can offer you everything you couldn't have, but always wanted. Why are you frowning? Not happy? You put on your poker face. 
who would have thought that your days dealing with rude stakeholders would come in handy for something like this? No, it sounds good. Really good. <laughs> right? But suddenly his smile fades. He stands up and looks at you with worry. You're getting weaker. And you were enjoying yourself so much, too. It made me smile. What was that drink you had? White wine? Yes. I wish I could drink that with you. It's something you humans do with each other, right? Well, I guess we just have to take what we can. Is there something we could do together? Oh, how about I sit with you at the dinner table? Is this him playing house with you? Adorable? Uh, sure, let's go for the good ending that will probably end up dead anyway. Of course, my dear. You shove down all the disgust you feel as fear has pushed you to say this phrase. Niall blinks in surprise. Then he smiles at you in pure bliss. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, now I'm all flustered. L let's go then, after you. You walk to the kitchen while Niall follows you. You can feel his gaze on you. Your hand reaches for the pantry, but Nial interrupts you. You can't just eat bread alone. You're already weak. How about something more filling? I will also try to lessen nausea, so please. For us? You clench your fist. That's rich, coming from him. You turn to the fridge and take out some eggs. You're fine if I make some scrambled eggs, right? Yeah, that sounds better. The pain and nausea have truly lessened. Seems like if you humor him, you can at least keep your head clear enough to think. Hmm, good to know. You hear Nial hum as you crack open some eggs and turn on the stove. Curiosity gets the better of you, and you glance at him as the eggs sizzle. He sits on a chair at the dining table, swaying left and right, happily waiting for you to finish cooking. Aww. What is this madness? This peaceful scene unnerves you more than anything, but you play along for now. After you choke some bites down, he leans forward in excitement. <laughs> it tastes better with some company, right? Absolutely. You're really sweet, too. <laughs> he continues to hum. I'm happy that there are at least some things we can do together. Hmm, what else? Oh, is it possible for us to watch something together later? I saw glimpses of, what was it, movie dates in your memory? My phone is a little small for us to watch something together. Aww, okay. With mixed feelings, you turn back to your plate. Thankfully, he at least lets you eat in peace until you're finished. You clean up and begin to fidget, as you're not sure how Niall wants to continue the day. Suddenly, you get goosebumps and slump down. You heave. A wave of nausea surging through you. Aww. Oh no! I thought I could give you more time! Uh-oh. He reaches for your arm, but it goes right through. Uh-oh. You done goofed, Nial. You goofed, Larry. I wish I could help you stand. After a few seconds, your nausea dissipates. How can you survive this situation? What should you do? Is there a way to get rid of him? Hmm... Let's get back to bed, all right? You both shuffle back to the bedroom. You lay down in bed, and Nial sits down beside you. He strokes your hair as you gradually fall asleep. Oh boy. Hmm. The outline looked a little red. Oh dear. Oh, We're not having a good time. We're having a bad time. I don't know if it was before. But I think the text box is slowly moving. Cool. You hardly slept and still feel weak. Your neck is very stiff and the weird colors appear again before your eyes. Oh, you're awake. Good morning, dear. Uh, oh, up, 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 oh, I see we've been busy. You turn your head and see multiple Neals next to the bed. You suppress the urge to scream. <laughs> Here. I wanted to show you what our children inside you look like. I want to use name getting named Larry. I'm sorry. There's even one that looks like you. Ah, here. He's beautiful. 
I love our beautiful son. Our son is beautiful. Unless it's unless it's a girl, then our daughter is beautiful. He puts a blob of blue mass on your lap. The way it gurgles and cries, it sounds desperately like a human baby. <coughs> this 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 kid this gotta come to an end soon. It coughs and some blue spit runs down its cheek. Isn't it cute? No! You know, I'm I'm usually not the kind of person who likes being mean to characters in video games, but in this case, I kind of can't wait for the uh, the option to choose the options to tell him off. Like this, this has been much. I'll never get over Meth Baby. As long as I live, I'll never unsee Meth Baby. No, but I'm gonna say yes. But we need to clean up that spit. Uh. Oh, right. He takes the baby back and wipes up the spittle. Good. Are they... well? Yes, we're all really healthy. Wonderful. Just great. Come get breakfast once you're ready. You seem even weaker today, so I'll stay silent while you sleep a bit more, alright? You nod and lay down. After a few hours, you reluctantly sit up. Your grumbling stomach won't shut up. While you walk to the kitchen, you assess your situation and try to think of a plan. Niel won't let you call a doctor, nor other help. He loves acting like a husband to you. If you humor him, he'll try to lessen the effects of the infection. Hmm. Good to know. But if he stays, you will certainly die. Hmm. You arrive in the kitchen, and Niel shows himself. So you have enough strength to eat now. Great! How do I get out of this? Is there a way to somehow use his fixation on family against him? Hmm. A slight headache interrupts your thoughts. I'm actually trying to think about this. What are you thinking so hard about? It's like something is moving around inside your head. I mean, would he be able to hear your thoughts or something? W what are you doing? I just want to know what you're thinking. You try your hardest to think of something positive about Niall. <coughs> oh no! You can't risk him seeing what you truly think. A lovely day to spend with my Niall. Oh, you charmer. He sounds absolutely delighted. The headache disappears and you sigh in relief. I think somewhere in your memories, it said a little caffeine helps when you have a headache. Yeah, coffee sounds great right now. You put a kettle on and shake some instant coffee into your mug. Then you take a yogurt cup from the fridge and get a spoon. Niall's eyes glimmer with excitement, as if he expects you to do some magic tricks. <laughs> Is yogurt good? Yeah, it's sweet and cold, refreshing. After a while, you start to play with your spoon. Maybe it's better if you only eat a bit. You don't want to upset your stomach. Come on, eat a little more. We have more mouths to feed after all. <laughs> the reminder makes you drop your spoon. What's wrong? Him. Everything about him and what he does to you. Like, dude, this, 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 is, this, this is ridiculous. Enough. You stare at him with wide eyes. You bite down hard on your lips to hold yourself back from giving him a piece of your mind. <laughs> you are a stronger person than I, me. Are you... angry? No, no. I know you're just worried. Well, we both want you to be healthy, right? So I'm allowed to be worried about you, right? Sure. This is a nightmare. When the water is ready, you pour some into your mug. After adding some milk, you mix the coffee and drink it. Do you feel a little better? Yes. There's palpable tension between you two. Neil makes the first move, putting his hand on yours. Here, this might cheer you up. You see blue shapes glow and dance in the space between your hands. Do you like it? You slowly nod. Oddly, this beautiful dance of colors comforts you. It pains you that he seems to care, despite being the cause of your suffering. Do you want to spend more time together in the living room? Maybe watch the fire in the fireplace? <sighs> Niall sighs. 
maybe sleep will help. I hope we can do something together tomorrow, Marlo. Now let's go. Dude, I can barely walk. Let me finish my yogurt, please. He walks beside you as you go back to your bedroom. Tomorrow you will have to get it together, no matter what it takes. Oh yeah, that's definitely getting more red. Oh boy. Oh boy. You wake up in your weakest state yet. Your skull feels full and ready to burst. Your heavy limbs struggle to move on command. Your breathing is dry and ragged, and you're attacked by shivers from a sweltering fever. You don't have much time left. You steel yourself and decide that you have to push through, no matter how upset he gets. You have to at least try. In your dizzy state, you look up, and there he is. Hi. Hey. Sup. Good morning. You wish dearly that he would just leave your body. He acts like a husband and wants to be a father. What a disgusting display of this fake family. Wait, a father? You got something, Marlo? You got something? Because I don't got nothing. I don't have any ideas. Neil, I have a question. Yes? He strokes your hair as he speaks. How you wish you could smack his hand away. Why do you want to be a father? Hmm. Well, I sort of already am, right? I believe I'm pretty good at it. Uh oh. Yes, you are a wonderful father, Nial. <laughs> yes, you are a wonderful father, Nial. <laughs> Thank you, Marlo. I'm glad you think so too. We are a wonderful family. He gives you a kiss on your forehead, but no lips touch your skin, only a tingling flare of heat. Aw, he's just an imaginary husband after all. You haven't really moved much. Are you too weak to stand up today? Is it even too hard to talk now? How about I dig deeper and see for myself? Hey! You feel something pushing and pulling inside your head. Show your memory of a relative who is struggling before their death. Maybe Nail will show you mercy. You're just exhausted at this point. Marlo, are you this tired? You nod. I beg you, make the pain stop. Nyal looks over you with worry, pacing around the room, chewing a fingernail. How about... He puts a hand on your forehead. Does this make you feel better? No. What are you trying to do? I saw a glimpse of your memory, once of when you were little. I believe your mother did this for you when you were sick as well? <laughs> Silly you, I had a fever then, not an infection. Guilt flashes across his face. But he shakes his head, and affection returns to his gaze. I will think of a way. For now, sleep, my dear. Mm, I'm gonna sleep, all right. With the last of your energy spent, you drift off into a deep slumber. Ooh, my brain. Ooh, my poor gray matter. Oh, it's not looking good. Oh, even the text box isn't looking good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your breathing is shallow as you wake up in your bed. Larry, come on. Larry, come on, I'm dying here! Patterns dance in front of your eyes, and you hear Nial humming. You know he's not real, but you still feel his warmth next to you. Is it comforting? Are you scared? It doesn't matter anymore. All you know is that you're experiencing him. <laughs> Hope is gone from your mind. You can't tell illusions from reality anymore. You turn your head towards Neil and try to focus your eyes on him. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. Thank you. He reaches out to you and caresses your hair. You must have turned and tossed a lot in your sleep. The bed sheets are like a veil on you. Creepy! Maybe this is the only way we can marry. I know we don't have a lot of time. I feel you getting weaker by the second. But don't worry. I am with you. Until death do us part.
You feel him wrap you in his embrace. You never imagined that death would feel so warm. Espoir David, how does it feel to be the one being forced to marry instead of the one being forced to do the marriage on? D -d -d unwilling marriage. You slowly close your eyes as you hear Neil humming the wedding march. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, oh, I'm dead. I'm, I'm, I'm dead and married. You heard of dead and buried? Well, I'm dead and married. And the title screen has changed. Uh. All right, Larry. All right, Larry. Let's give you what for. <laughs> 